Hello, in today's episode we are going to talk about Pachycephalosaurus. If you are enjoying our content, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click the bell to be notified about our future releases. You can also support us with YouTube Premium Membership, which will grant you benefits, such as viewing our videos early, loyalty badges, and access to supporter-only polls. We also have mobile games, available both on Play Store and App Store, which will be linked in description. Pachycephalosaurus is a genus of pachycephalosaurid dinosaurs. The type species, Pachycephalosaurus wyomingensis, is the only known species. It lived during the late Cretaceous period, about 70 to 66 millions of years ago, in what is now North America. Remains have been excavated in Montana, South Dakota, Wyoming, and Alberta. It was a herbivorous creature which is primarily known from a single skull, and a few extremely thick skull roofs, at 22 centimeters thick. More complete fossils have been found in recent years. Pachycephalosaurus was among the last non-avian dinosaurs before the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event. It possessed long hindlimes and small forelimbs. Pachycephalosaurus is the largest known pachycephalosaur. The thick skull domes of Pachycephalosaurus and related genera gave rise to the hypothesis that Pachycephalosaurs used their skulls in intraspecies combat. Size of Pachycephalosaurus is not known for certain, as only skull remains have been described. It is suggested that it was a bipedal dinosaur, about 4.5 meters long, and weight of about 450 kilograms. Based on other Pachycephalosaurids, it probably had a fairly short, thick neck, short forelimbs, a bulky body, long hind legs and a heavy tail, which was likely held rigid by ossified tendons. The skull was short, and possessed large, rounded eye sockets that faced forward, suggesting that the animal had good eyesight and was capable of binocular vision. Pachycephalosaurus had a small muzzle which ended in a pointed beak. The teeth were tiny, with leaf-shaped crowns. The head was supported by an S or U-shaped neck. Younger individuals of Pachycephalosaurus maybe have had flatter skulls, with larger horns projecting from the back of the skull. As the animal grew, the horns shrunk and rounded out, as the dome grew. Because of this theory, species of Dracorex and Stigimoloch became synonymous with Pachycephalosaurus, as juveniles of the species. Remains attributable to Pachycephalosaurus may have been found as early as the 1850s. In 1859 or 1860 Ferdinand van de Veer Hayden, an early fossil collector in the North American West, collected a bone fragment in the vicinity of the head of the Missouri River, from what is now known to be the Lance Formation in southeastern Montana. In 1943 nearly complete skull was found in the Hell Creek Formation in Montana, which gave birth to a new species, Pachycephalosaurus grangeri. In 2015 some Pachycephalosaurid material and a domed parietal attributable to Pachycephalosaurus were discovered in Scholard Formation, Alberta, Canada, implying dinosaurs of this era were cosmopolitan, and didn't have discrete faunal provinces. In 1999 a possible Pachycephalosaurus fossils were found in Alaska, however study of the material, it cannot be fully attributed to Pachycephalosaurus, instead for the time being, it is referred as a different species called Alaska Cephal. Aside from Pachycephalosaurus itself, two other Pachycephalosaurs were described from the latest Cretaceous of the northwestern United States, Stigimolox spinifer and Dracorex hobwartsia. The former is only known from a juvenile skull with a reduced, dome and large spikes, while the latter, also known from only a juvenile skull, had a seemingly flat head with short horns. Due to their unique head ornamentation, they were seen as separate species for a number of years, but in 2007, they were proposed to be juvenile or female morphologies of Pachycephalosaurus. At that year's meeting of the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology, Jack Horner of Montana State University presented evidence, from analysis of the skull of the Dracorex specimen, that it may well be a juvenile form of Stigimoloch. 
In addition, he presented data that indicates that both Stigimoloch and Dracorex may be juvenile forms of Pachycephalosaurus. Horner and M. B. Goodwin published their findings in 2009, showing that the spike slash node and skull dome bones of all three species exhibit extreme plasticity and that both Dracorex and Stigimoloch are known only from juvenile specimens while Pachycephalosaurus is known only from adult specimens. These observations, in addition to the fact that all three forms lived in the same time and place, led them to conclude that Dracorex and Stigimoloch were simply juvenile Pachycephalosaurus, which lost spikes and grew domes as they aged. It has been commonly hypothesized that Pachycephalosaurus and its relatives were the bipedal equivalents of bighorn sheep or musk oxen, where male individuals would ram each other headlong, and that they would horizontally straighten their head, neck, and body in order to transmit stress during ramming. However, there have also been alternative suggestions that the Pachycephalosaurs could not have used their domes in this way. The primary argument that has been raised against head butting is that the skull roof may not have adequately sustained impact associated with ramming, as well as a lack of definitive evidence of scars or other damage on fossilized Pachycephalosaurus skulls. Also, the rounded shape of the skull would lessen the contacted surface area during head butting, resulting in glancing blows. Alternatively, Pachycephalosaurus and other Pachycephalosaurid genera may have engaged in flank butting during intraspecific combat. In this scenario, an individual may have stood roughly parallel or faced a rival directly, using intimidation displays to cow its rival. If intimidation failed, the Pachycephalosaurus would bend its head downward and to the side, striking the rival Pachycephalosaur on its flank. This hypothesis is supported by the relatively broad torso of most pachycephalosaurs, which would have protected vital organs from trauma. Scientists do not yet know what these dinosaurs ate. Having very small, ridged teeth, they could not have chewed tough, fibrous plants like flowering shrubs as effectively as other dinosaurs of the same period. It is assumed that Pachycephalosaurs lived on a mixed diet of leaves, seeds, and fruits. The sharp, serrated teeth would have been very effective for shredding plants. It is also suspected that the dinosaur may have included meat in its diet. The most complete fossil jaw shows that it had serrated blade-like front teeth, reminiscent of those of carnivorous theropods.